Okay, in this video we're going to learn about uh, identifying primary teeth versus permanent teeth. So for like growth check appointments, uh, so you can accurately identify the teeth. So these are models, so they're not a perfect representation of real teeth. We'll look at some actual photos here in just a minute, but um, this will give us kind of a good idea of what to look for in the photos. So by the age that we see patients, they're usually at least seven or eight years old. And so that means that they'll usually have their four permanent incisors in place. Here on this model, they're nice and crooked, but these are permanents here. And then usually they'll still have their C, D, and E present until around age 11 or 12, or maybe even 13 or a little bit older. So. We want to be able to identify at those growth check appointments which of these teeth are primary and which are permanent teeth. So this is kind of how to do that. So first thing you'll look at is these three are usually the three that we're looking at because normally these four are in, the six is in by around age six, and here you can see the seven is just starting to peek through. Um, so what we'll do is you'll look at the teeth, and these, when they're primary teeth, primary teeth look different in a couple of ways. So one way that they look different is primary teeth often look slightly whiter, so more white than a permanent tooth. A permanent tooth will look like a shade of ivory or yellow. Um, so that's your first indicator, but more importantly is the shape of the tooth. So these canines right here are C's, these primary canines, they are, smaller and more worn down than a permanent tooth would be because they've been in the mouth for years getting kind of chewed on and everything. So they'll be worn down all three of these teeth a little bit more than a permanent would. So the canine, the primary canine and a permanent canine look roughly similar. They're both kind of diamond shaped, but a baby canine, a primary canine is smaller and uh, it has less kind of sharp anatomy to it. So I usually liken it to like a little mini marshmallow that's been mushed up and stuck in the mouth. It looks kind of rounded, kind of soft, not super sharp, not super aggressive looking. Whereas a permanent canine here on this model, you can see it's a lot bigger and its cusp is much larger and sharper. And we'll see a couple of photos of actual patients, but that's kind of how to tell the difference between a permanent and a primary canine. Baby canines are small, they're rounded, they're usually the cusp tip is all worn off and you can see like a little orange or brown spot right here where the enamel has been worn through and exposed the dentin underneath. Whereas at the ages that we're doing growth checks, this canine is gonna be brand new. So it's gonna be sharp, it's gonna have a big sharp point, it's gonna have usually kind of uh, more anatomy, more kind of grooves and ridges on the tongue side. So that's how you tell the difference between a C and a three. So the D's and fours can be, so D's and E's are more square. So they have more of a square shape to them. Whereas fours and fives have much more of an oval shape to them. Also D's and E's E's especially will look almost exactly like the six, except slightly smaller. So you'll see it has four cusps, just like the six has. So the six has one, two, three, four cusps. The E has one, two, three, four cusps. Whereas the five has one, two, and the four also, one, two. And you'll see the anatomy on these fours and fives is much deeper, like the groove in the middle of the tooth, this valley is much deeper. Um, on a D and an E, they have pretty, fairly shallow anatomy. So these cusps aren't super tall and pointy. They're more kind of shallow. Usually they're kind of worn down. So often just like with the C, you'll see these cusp tips will have like a little dot on the top where they've worn through the enamel and gotten into the dentin. So you'll see like a little kind of dot, a brown or a yellow or an orange dot on those cusp tips where they've worn down. Whereas the four and the five, when they come in, they're brand new. So the cusps are usually a lot sharper, a lot more defined anatomy, a lot 
uh, deeper groove here, but the easiest way to identify them is the D's, the D's and E's look more square from the top, and they look a lot more like permanent molars, whereas the fours and fives are much more oval in shape, and they look very little like a permanent molar. You can see this is a giant square, and this is more of an oval. Okay, so here's a photo of someone who is in mixed dentition. So we see here in the front, these are permanents. We have our twos and we have our ones. And then right here we have a C, a D, an E, and a six. So you'll see that this E looks just like the six, except slightly smaller. It has four points, four cusps. It's much more square in shape and uh, it looks just like a six, but smaller. This D you'll see has a very short anatomy. Its cusps aren't very pronounced. They're not tall and sharp. It's more flat. You'll see it's kind of worn down and it's much more square in shape. Whereas we see on this other side, the D is gone and this is a four that's erupting. So you see it's got one big groove down the middle and then a tall cusp on the lingual and a tall cusp on the facial. This is just tissue that's still over the top of the tooth, so as it erupts, that tissue will pull back and you'll see the full oval shape of the tooth. So you'll see this is very square and this is much more oval in shape. Now you'll see this is a baby canine and this is also a baby canine. So they both look like little mushed up marshmallows. So very rounded, very soft looking, kind of no sharp angles, no big cusp tips. You'll see the cusp tip is pretty worn. So you'll see this little dot right there and this dot right there. And you'll see that they're probably, if you grab these, they're probably loose as well. So if it's small and loose, it's a baby. It's a baby tooth, very likely. So over on this side, we've got our C, our four, and our E right here. And here's our six. So here's the lower arch of that same patient. So here in the front, we have our two to two. These are all permanents. This is where I should have a C, or the patient should have a C, but it's missing. And that point right there, that's the cusp tip of the three. So there's no C, there's the three just starting to erupt. Here is the D. You'll see it's very kind of square. It's very blocky looking. And then here is the E. You'll see the E looks just like the six or very, very similar, just smaller. And these have composites on them here on the occlusal surface, so they don't look totally like they would if they didn't have composites, but you get the idea. And then over here on this side, you'll see this is a three that's erupting. You'll see it's much more ivory or yellow colored versus this white of the primary tooth. So we've got a three, two, one, one, two, the cusp tip of the three, then we have a D, E, and a six back here. And then over on this side, we've got a D, E, and this is a six. This has a stainless steel crown on it. You, it's very rare to have stainless steel crowns on permanent teeth, but sometimes you'll see them. Usually if there's a stainless steel crown on a tooth, it's gonna be on a primary molar, either an E or a D, usually. Here's the lower arch on another patient. So I usually like to start in the anterior. So these are definitely two to two. Here is a three, a four, a five, a six, and here's the seven starting to come in back here. And so you'll see that as opposed to the Ds, this uh, four is very oval. It's very rounded or oval in shape when you look down from the occlusal surface. Same with the five. This tooth is rotated. So here's the, cu the facial cusp and here's the lingual cusp. It should be over here, but it's rotated about 45 degrees. So you'll see it's very rounded. It looks nothing like the six. Whereas if this was an E, it would look just like that six, except smaller, a little bit smaller. So over on this side, we've got a three, a four, and a five, a six, and a seven back here. And so a couple of things that tip you off that these are fours and fives instead of Ds and Es. Again, they're very round or oval instead of being square and blocky. And this E looks, or where the E would be, this looks nothing like a six. This is a round. It's got one cusp tip on the facial, one on the lingual, one on the facial, one on the lingual. So these are definitely fours and fives. Also, the 
D and E are slightly larger than the four and five. So just when you lose the D and E and the permanents come in, often you'll have these spaces. These represent the difference in size between the D that fell out and the four that came in to replace it, and the E that fell out and the five that came in to replace it. This is a little bit of extra space. So here's the top arch on that same patient. <coughs> So you'll see here are the ones, here are the twos. On this side, we've got a three, because you'll see it's kind of ivory color. It's got a sharper point. It's bigger. You can see it's not completely in yet, but it's already bigger than a, than a C would be. And here you've got your four, because it's very oval in shape. It's got one cusp tip on the facial, one on the lingual. Here's a five, again, very oval in shape and it looks nothing like the six. The six has four cusps, one, two, three, four. This has two, one, two, and it's very oval in shape, and so this is a five. Over here, you got your two, you have a space, you have this, which is a four, and then you have this, which is an E. So you know it's an E because it looks just like the six, except slightly smaller. It's very square in shape. It has four cusp tips, one, two, three, four, and so this is an E. <clears throat> this tooth is probably loose. If you were to feel it, it's probably, because this five is in, this one's probably ready to fall out and that five's ready to come in. Now the other three is supposed to come in right here, so it's just not in yet. So the C is gone, this is the three position, but the three has not come in yet. And you can see here in the back, the sevens have not come in yet, here in the back on top. Okay, here is a photo of a patient who's just about ready to get started with full treatment. Um, you can see we've got our two to two. This is a three, a four, because it's very round, you see, a five, a six, and then here is the seven, and you'll see there's still a little bit of tissue, a little pedicle is what that's called, over the distal of the seven. And same thing on this side, we've got a three, four, five, six, and a seven that's got just a little bit of tissue. Now you know these are threes, fours, and fives because this is large, it's kind of ivory color, it's got a sharp big point, um, and the fours and fives are in, so this is very likely a three. So the four you can see is very round, it's not square, it has a big point on the facial. This one has a couple of smaller points on the lingual, but very round, it's not square like a D would be. This five you can see is very oval shaped. It's got one cusp out on the facial, one on the lingual, and it looks nothing like the six. The six having five cusps in this case and looking very square. Here's the upper arch on that same patient. You can see he has a fixed retainer from a phase one treatment that was performed earlier. And then we look back, if, he, if we're seeing in a growth check if he's ready to start, You'll see here's a three. You'll see it's very large. It has a big point on it that's fresh and new. It's not worn down at all. Here's a four. This is oval. It's got one cusp tip on the facial, one on the lingual. Here's a five. Again, very oval. It's got one cusp on the facial, one on the lingual. Here's a six, and here's a seven. On this side, we have a three, four, five, six, and you can see this is the seven coming in. Its cusp tips on the facial are coming in. The lingual are still covered in gingiva. So I personally prefer that this would be completely in before we start treatment. But at this stage, since the two on the lowers are pretty much in, this one's in, and this one's almost in, and the patient, I believe, needed an expander. So the expander will be in there for about five months before we take it out and bond a bracket onto this one and onto this one. By that time, this will be completely in. So this patient is... I would give them the option to start treatment if they would like to. They could also continue to wait until that comes completely in before they start. Okay, here's another patient. Um, I start again with the anteriors. So these are two to two right here. You can tell a two to two or a ones and twos from A's and B's. The cusp tip or the incisal edges will have mammalons. There are these bumps that are on them. Also, they'll be much larger than the A's and B's. And like I say, by the time we see patients, usually these are in, or almost in. Usually A's and B's are not in, are not there anymore. So generally speaking, you got your two to two. This is a C, because again, it's smaller. It looks much smaller and rounded. It's not sharp and large like a three would be. And you can see the cusp tip is kind of worn right here. So you see that little circle, 
where the enamel has been worn through. So we've got a C, a D, because it's very square, and an E right here, <clears throat> because it looks almost just like this six, except a little bit smaller. And then on this side, we've got a C, a D, very square D with three or four cusps, and an E, because again, it looks like the six, only smaller. Here's the upper arch on that same patient. Again, you've got your ones and your twos. You've got a C, because it's small, and you can see the cusp tip is kind of worn on both of these. The cusp tip won't always be worn, but often it is. <coughs> Primary teeth are just not built as durable as permanent teeth, so their enamel is thinner and they'll wear through more quickly. Here is a D. You can see it's very square in shape. This one needs a little filling right here to be replaced. Uh, this is an E, and here's a 6. You'll see the E is very square. It has four cusps, and it looks just like a 6, except for a little bit smaller. Here's a C, a D, and an E, and a 6 on this other side. The next person, this is their lower arch. So we've got our 2 to 2. This is a three, because it's got a big, sharp cusp on it, and it's larger. Uh, this is a four. This is kind of an oval four. And here's a five, also kind of rounded five, but it's got one cusp here and one on the lingual, and looks nothing like this six. So this is a five, this is a four, this is a three, and here's the seven coming in right back here. It's still got a little bit of tissue over the back side, but it's there. Here's a three a four, it's got a cusp here and a cusp there, and it's much more oval or rounded. Here's a five, again, rounded, cusp tip here, one on the lingual. Here's a six and a seven. And here's the upper arch of that same patient. You've got your two to two, your three, which is very large, has a big sharp point on it. Here's the four, very oval, one cusp tip facial, one lingual, five, very oval, one cusp to facial, one cusp to lingual. Here's a six and a seven, and on this side, a three, four, five, six, and seven. Here's our next patient. This young feller has, here's the ones. Here's the two just starting to come in. Here's the other two positioned lingually here, just starting to come in. It's very crowded, so it's out, it's on the lingual side. You'll see here's a C, it's very small, it's got a worn cusp tip. Here's a D, which is very square and has multiple cusps on it. Here's an E, which looks just like the six except for smaller. Same thing on this side, you've got your small C that's a worn, your squarish D, your molar-like E, and your six. Here's the upper arch on that patient. You can see we've got our very large ones here. We've got a two ready to come in and a knot here. We don't have anything here yet. Here's a C, very small and squishy looking. Here's got a worn cusp tip there. Here's a D that's very square. Here's a E, very square, looks just like the six except smaller. Here's the C, D, E, and six on this one. Okay, so here's our next patient. This is a lower arch. We've got our two to two. Here is our three just starting to break through. This is a four just coming through about halfway. Here's an E, which looks just like the six, except smaller. Over here, we've got our three just under the surface. You can see that little white spot right there. This is a D, you'll see it's very worn down, and it gets this rosy color when it's about to fall out. And as high time it came out, it gets rosy like that kind of pink. And it's all worn out and it's very square. So there's a D, here's an E, which looks size and shape similar to the six, except a little bit smaller. Here's that same patient's upper arch. You can see he's got the two to two. Here's a space where the C should be, but it's gone. The three will be coming in here. Here's a D, again, worn cusp here. It's very square. Here's our E, which is very square looking and looks just like the six. Here's a space, the three is out here, gonna come in out here because there's not enough room for it to come in straight. Uh, here's a D, again, very worn out and square. Here's a E, and here's our six.